Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Tim with the City of Peachtree City Code Enforcement, and today we are going to talk about a small, slight overview of the code enforcement process here in the City of Peachtree City. All right, so code enforcement in Peachtree City started back in 1999, uh, as we, or at least as we know it now, started back in 1999. Prior to that, there was one person that did code enforcement. They worked strictly out of the building department. It was very low key. Uh, they would go out, drive around, see something, and then go back to the office type on a typewriter a letter and send it to people in the mail. So in 1999, a council adopted the standard housing code, which actually created a full-fledged code enforcement uh, office. They, we had uh, four officers. Lots of history here in your notes. You can check it out, uh, all the things that we did, uh, the, the things with budget cuts and stuff. We went to the police department, have come back to City Hall now, but we're currently under, go ahead, the uh, planning and zoning uh, division. Uh, we, uh, we're under that division and technically the planning and zoning department. Uh, we have a senior code enforcement officer who reports to the director of planning and zoning. Um, we, uh, there are three officers. All three of us are field officers. Similar to a patrol sergeant, the senior code enforcement officer does the same duties as everybody else, just then also does the things of a supervisor. All right. All the officers are sworn officers of the Peachtree City Municipal Court. In other words, we can issue citations to court, but only for uh, Peachtree City ordinances that have been codified by council. We are not able to uh, enforce state law unless some way, shape, or form council has also incorporated into our code. All the members of Peachtree City Code Enforcement are members of the Georgia Association of Code Enforcement. That is where we get our continuing education every year. That's run out of the Carl Vincent Institute of Government with the University of Georgia. Okay. Uh, there's three officers. Myself, I'm the senior code enforcement officer. Uh, in your notes and up here, you've got uh, my phone number as well as my personal phone number. All right. The first number is my city cell phone. That number gets given out to everybody. Everybody I talk to or gets one of my cards gets that number. Anybody that I give a notice of violation or a citation to gets that card or gets that number. So I've also included my personal cell phone number because I turn my work phone off at the end of the day and I don't use it as my personal phone because the Lord knows who's going to call. So I've also included my personal cell phone number in here that if after hours or on the weekends or whatever like that, you guys need my help, feel free to call. It, we've already did it today. The first day that I've given this class, we've already had the morning officers have had to call me. So it's no, no problem, no issue, just, uh, just don't give out my personal number, please. All right. The uh, other officers, Molly Drennan, uh, I, I know all you guys, I think, know her. Uh, most people, uh, she's a, been a code enforcement officer for 18 years. Freddie Frank, uh, he is uh, also a code enforcement officer. He came to us from the Parks and Recreation Department as a parks monitor. Uh, we, are, we all have radio numbers. I'm 3802, Molly's 3801, Freddie's 3803. We do listen to the radio, all right, so uh, we can hear what's going on and then help, help out if we need. All right, so what we do, we enforce the uh, municipal ordinances of the city of Peachtree City, all right? Those municipal ordinances ultimately help protect the health, safety, and welfare of every citizen and visitor to the city, all right? The municipal ordinances include our municipal code, our zoning ordinance, our land development ordinance, and then also our parks monitor, okay? Under our municipal stuff, we do stuff like health and sanitation, signs, water restrictions, uh, alarm registrations, Michelle even actually still sends us uh, letters to distribute to people, fire protection, building construction, property maintenance and uh, renovation or rehabilitation. Under uh, zoning, things like uh, permitted and non-permitted use, livestock and fowl, uh, outside displays and walking signs. Walking signs is gonna be a big one we're gonna talk about today. All right, uh, under land development, erosion and sediment control, landscape plans, uh, green belt and buffer control and illicit discharge. And under parks monitoring, we look for stuff like vandalism, safety issues, uh, animals and parking on fields. And then also we can enforce the Fayette County Water Department's regulations at Lake Kedron and some of them at Lake McIntosh because the city has codified those rules that the county has put in place. So if you can't always get a marshal involved, sometimes we can help you out. Okay. What we don't do. All right, what we don't do is we do not enforce federal or state laws, as I've already said. 
We do not do mold remediation. The city will not pay for us to become mold remediators. We can't afford it. And we also do not want to take on that liability. If anybody ever asks you a question about mold, it makes no sense to send them to us because we can't answer it either. All right. We don't do animal control per se. The city obviously has the contract with animal control. But if you guys get called on an animal complaint and we're available, you know, let us know we can help. All right. We do not do any building inspections, that's new, uh, new construction, or any renovation work. We are not the building inspectors, okay? We also don't issue any permits. So if you hear people saying they got a building permit or a sign permit or whatever, we didn't issue any of those. We only do the enforcement work to make sure that people have them and are following them properly. Keeping up with that, we also don't do anything with money. If somebody has not paid for their permit, they've applied for it, but then not paid for it, technically they don't have one. And they say, oh, if we can just pay, the answer is no, you still gotta go to City Hall and do it. We don't do anything with anybody's money. We never take the money. We don't do evictions, that's strictly the Fayette County Constable. We will not find anybody's property lines. That's not what we do. Now, we can sometimes give people an idea of where their property lines are at, but we're not professional surveyors. That's the only way to 100% know where your property lines are. We do not do property damage claims. If a contractor does something or whatever, that's a civil issue we do not mediate. And uh, obviously, we don't get into contract disputes. And then we do not enforce deed and covenant restrictions. So deed and covenant restrictions, they are Rules set forth within a small particular area, specifically within HOAs is what we're talking about. So specific subdivisions and their homeowners associations. All right, A city ordinance is something codified by council. We can enforce that. They, they've got specific penalties up to $1,000 or six months in jail. All right, But a deed and covenant restriction is only on a certain subdivision, so it only applies to certain people. City ordinances apply to everyone in the city. So we treat our city ordinances in a way that it, re it affects everybody in the same way. Whereas a deed and covenant restriction can be more restrictive within a subdivision. And that's the next slide. They can be more restrictive, all right? An example of that, as we go to the next slide, is trailers, campers, and boats must be hidden from view. That is not a city ordinance, but several of our subdivisions say that if you have a trailer, camper, or boat, it, it can't, people can't see it. Our rule in the city is that it must be behind the main line of the home, right? But if you're driving down the road and you can still see it, as long as it's behind the home, it's compliant with the ordinance. But if the subdivision has a, a deed and covenant restriction that says it can't be in view, that's not something we're going to enforce. We get lots of calls for people to ask us to enforce that kind of a thing, and we don't do it. We don't enforce the placement of child play structures. In other words, trampolines, Swing sets, if somebody puts it in the front yard, there's nothing we can do about it, okay? Uh, types of fencing, you, chain link fence is allowed in the city of Peachtree City. Now there's some rules so that it's allowed to be, once it's allowed to be there, but people say, oh, we have specific types of fence. No, that's not true. We allow all, every type of fencing. It's subdivisions that don't allow some of it. We don't require people to rake their leaves or their pine straw. But once they do and they create an accumulation, that's a little different. But I can't make somebody go rake their pine straw or rake their leaves off their driveway. Uh, we don't enforce the placement of residential trash uh, containers. That's the biggest complaint that we get that we can do nothing about. People will put their trash can in the street and then just leave it there. They take their trash down, put it in the can. Everything they never take it back up to the house. We have the open market with the trash companies in the city, and so there is absolutely nothing we can do. We don't know when these people have their trash service. We don't know how many days a week they have their trash service. So if they leave it at the street, there's nothing we can do about it. And then the last one on the list, we do not enforce the appearance of holiday decorations, as long as they are clearly holiday decorations. If Santa Claus has been had his head chopped off and hanging off the, uh, the, uh, the gutter like the guy on Willow Bend likes to do, that's his choice. There's nothing we can do about it. How we do this, all right? We do it by doing proactive patrols. There's, the three of us have our own uh, uh, areas. Um, we divide the city up into three, three zones, a uh, north, a middle, and a south. I got one out here uh, so you guys can see this. Uh, everything from Highway 54 North is zone one. 54 to McIntosh Trail. Uh, slash Kelly is zone two. 
to include all of Plantera, even though the little part goes a little south of it. And then everything from McIntosh Trail Kelly South is zone three. So we do proactively patrol, but we are also, we will accept complaints. We do accept anonymous complaints. We generally respond to the complaints within 24 hours, if not quicker, all right? We have a content management system that keeps us connected in the field, and so that if we decide we need to issue uh, some sort of an enforcement action, we do notices of violation, warnings, citations, stop work orders, all right? So we have all that, all those ways that we can do some sort of enforcement action. One thing I was telling everybody this morning is consider if you guys arrest somebody, figure that's like our citation. As often as you maybe arrest somebody, that's maybe how often we write a citation. As much as you write a citation, that's probably how many times we write notices of violation. So scale it down that way, that's the way we kind of look at it. Um, we work with every division and every department in the city. There's something that is in the code that's involving everybody. We're constantly getting calls from admin department, public works department, and everybody. So we work with the whole city. Uh, we do conduct investigations and inspections, and we do testify in court. This is our content management system, just a screenshot to show you, uh, show you um, the, our, our monthly report. And then this is just a graph that shows uh, the breakdown of the things that we do. It happens to show that grass is probably the most uh, noted violation that we give. 25% of what we do is telling people they have to mow their lawn. What we can do for you, okay? We can be another set of eyes and ears out there on the road for you. We can assist with calls that are ordinance violations like we did today. Already the first day that we gave out our, our phone numbers like this to in a class, we got a call from an officer. The call went out over the radio. Unfortunately, I had turned my radio off and even my phone off for, for a meeting. And a call went out about uh, <laughs> barnyard animals tearing up somebody's yard. That's a code enforcement issue, not a police issue. We, we stepped in and we took care of that. Plus, we do listen to the radio. So if somebody's calling out stuff that we can assist with, we will do that. We also will assist with minor tasks. The other day, somebody needed a blood kit. You guys were all busy. We're right around the corner. We'll take a blood kit too. So we can always help you guys out like that. We can provide additional information. We still get the police department emails. So when stuff goes out like the uh, people dumping in Camden, right? Uh, another person came up with, hey, I think that person lives in Flat Creek Villas. I was in Flat Creek Villas when that email came out. There's the truck. I sent the email back to the officer, that truck is here, I sent them a photo, everything like that, verified it was there, hopefully that all got handled and taken care of. And we can also do work with your neighborhoods. This, the, the neighborhood policing is something you guys are really pushing. We can really help you out. I've been asked by several officers to go to some of your neighborhood meetings, and after they've done their little spiel and everything like that, 90% of the questions really always turn out to be code enforcement type questions. You know, so we can help you guys with that, everything like that. In fact, I got a call from Officer Brown yesterday about chickens in one of his neighborhoods, and I think we got that all taken care of. Okay? What can you do for us? Start again. Well, I was going to say, be another set of eyes and ears for us. But first thing I got up there is support our enforcement. All right? If we call you guys out on the radio or on the phone, we, we, we need you. Okay? Nine times out of 10, it ends up being something minor, simple as please just make him give me his ID or whatever like that. We get a lot of people that don't believe we really have any sort of authority at all, and so they will refuse to give us ID or stuff. So if you guys come out and we've called you for something like that, just support us, tell us what's going on, that kind of thing. But be another set of eyes and ears. We're not here 24-7 like the PD is. You guys are getting called into places. If you get inside somewhere, remember, we don't have the right to go inside some of these places like you do. All right, we don't have the right to go around some of these places like you do. Even if somebody says there's a suspicion of a violation in the backyard, I don't have the right to go look. You guys, if there's a suspicion of a crime in the backyard, you guys have the ability to go look, look and see what's going on. All right, if we're not on duty, Give me a call. If you can't give me a call, take a photo, all right? If we are on duty, call us. You can call us on the radio. You can call us on the phone. You now have all of our numbers and everything like that. Remember, we're just like the pizza delivery guy. We can't necessarily get into the house once you guys leave, all right? If you see, now we're going to get into the stuff that I really want you guys, if you're starting to see, all right? A lot of this stuff on the first one is about signs and, and things like that. Remember, we don't allow any signs on the highways unless they belong to the city, 
All right, so that's the first thing to look for. All right, on Highway 74 and 54, if there's some little sign that pops up, it's not allowed unless, because we got this one today as well, the movies, the movie companies that put up their directionals, the little yellow signs that, are, that can flip flop over, those we, we, we do allow without a permit, all right? But if you see somebody putting up the little sign that says ptcsingles.com or whatever like that, stop them. They're not allowed to be doing that. Now, if you just see the signs, I'm not asking you to pick them up. We can do that, but let us know they're out there. Let us know something's going on and we can take care of it. All right. <clears throat> Generally, signs on the highways and stuff have to be behind monument signs because signs always have to be on private property. All right, if they're on the highway, they're not generally going to be on private property. Nothing can be taller than five feet tall. No signs can be internally illuminated. Stress that one because I actually got a complaint from a police officer the other day about the neighbor here at the U-Haul. Just within the last month, they decided to internally illuminate their signs. We didn't know about it because it gets dark, right? One of your officers called me and said, why do they have these internally illuminated signs? He said it was blinding, and I came out that next night, sure enough, saw it and everything like that, and we've handled it. We actually wrote four citations to U-Haul because of these signs, and if you consider how I relate our citations to you guys arresting people, that's how serious the city takes these internally illuminated signs, right? And it came, again, from the police department tip, so we truly appreciated the help with that. Walking signs. Rumor has it that uh, one of the reasons we're doing all this today is because the city manager got upset that he got a phone call on a Sunday about people walking with signs out by the gymboree when they were going out of business. All right. If there's ever going to be people that have a permission to be walking signs, you guys are going to know because we're going to send you guys an email let you know they're allowed to be out there. When they're out there, they have to be on private property. So even though they're walking across uh, the highway or near the highway, they have to stay on the private property if they want to be out there with their walking signs. They can't be out in the median, and in the cases of the highway right there, they can't even really be on uh, the sidewalks. they got to be in the grass behind the sidewalks. All right. <clears throat> Commercial industrial property, uh, they can have much larger signs, so if you see something weird there, just give us a call. Let us know. We'll take a look at it. Residential temp signs can actually be a little larger than the ones you, you usually see. 16 square feet is actually bigger than most of the ones they put out there. So again, if you see something weird, just let us know. All right. Uh, people can have all the campaign signs on their property they want. All right. If they want to put 400 uh, vote Republican signs up and then 250 vote Democrat signs up, they can do that. All right. As long as they're campaign signs and they're specifically election campaign signs, we can't do anything about them. Okay. The free speech allows it if they're on their private property. Protesters, we have the monthly protest from the, the post office folks here in town, from the Staples. They're allowed to be there as long as they've got their signs in their hand. These guys that are professional protesters now that come to Peachtree City, I think they know that, they've learned from us, and everything like that. They hold their signs and everything like that. They, you know, they can't put the signs in the ground, but they can hold them and, and, and do that. One another thing that we have a lot of is people like to see, they seem to think that campaigning on the roadside in, in Peachtree City helps, all right? If they're standing there waving and they're holding their campaign sign, nothing I can do about that, okay? Now, they're not allowed to obstruct traffic, they're not allowed to be in the roadway itself, thus they're not allowed to be on the little concrete curbs inside uh, the intersection of 54 and 74, but as long as they're on the corners, they're fine. Again, they have to hold their signs. They cannot put their signs in the ground. This past election cycle, we've had a candidate who was also then supporting one of those SPLOS things. So he, he was holding his sign, and he had a SPLOS sign that he put in the ground to try to show support for both, right? I told him he had to pick them up and hold them both and everything, and he had misinterpreted what he had read and everything. So he was holding his sign, but he thought the SPLOS one could be in the ground. And I said, no, you have to hold them all. So if you guys see that, if you want to roll your window down and say something, I'd appreciate it. Otherwise, just call us and we'll talk. Interiors of, of properties. I don't know how many of y'all remember about 10, 11 years ago. I know you probably won't, but the house on Wildwood where uh, they uh, took out the floor and then they took out the subfloor and they used the floor joist to prop up uh, motorcycles to do motorcycle repair. All right. If you go inside that house, call us immediately. Take all the pictures you can immediately. All right. Anything that looks out of the ordinary inside a home, 
please call us. All right. If you see any sort of uh, sleeping arrangements in non-habitable areas, aka the kitchen, in the, the garage or whatever like that, call us. Now if somebody's got a mattress leaned against the wall in the garage and it's just one mattress and the car's still in there and stuff like that, clearly they're storing it there. But if there's no vehicles in the garage and there's a couple mattresses, oh, and you see some sheets and blankets and stuff, call us, all right? You know, because then we're going to want to know why people are sleeping in the garage, because that's not acceptable. Peachtree City no longer uses a definition for family, all right? The def what a family is has changed so much just in the last couple of years, okay? So now everything is based upon the International Property Maintenance Code and the size of homes and where people are sleeping and actually doing things in their homes. We actually would have to measure the size of somebody's closet to see if they can actually fit on the right number of people in the home. You gotta have certain size bedrooms, certain size storage areas, and certain size community living areas to have certain numbers of people in the home. Um, if it's excessively filthy, call us. And I mean excessively filthy, all right? People can be dirty, people can be nasty sometimes or whatever, you know, but look, if it's truly a disgusting thing and if there's children involved, call us. Ingress. Uh, Exactly. All right. Ingress and egress points obstructed. If they've got so much stuff in their house and they're hoarding it, or even if they just are very, they're blocking the windows and doors, it's not allowed. Call us out. Let us know if it's in the middle of the night. Take pictures. Whatever. No exterior locks on interior doors. I don't care if they've got a 15-year-old uh, daughter and an 11-year-old son and she wants him to stay out of her room. No exterior locks on interior doors. That's a life safety issue. It's a violation of the ordinance. And the fire department, that's one of the things they hit us on the most. They'll go inside these homes for stuff, and they can't get into the person who's sick until somebody finds the key to get into that person's door. Okay? Uh, no clear aisles. If they don't have 32 inches of width in the aisleway, right, let us know. And we've had houses in Peachtree City multiple ones where the people only have a single path through the house and it's not 32 inches wide. We can handle that, we can take care of that. If they've got holes in the ceiling, holes in the walls, holes in the floor or whatever, it's not allowed. Let us know. Now, people can live in a home that doesn't necessarily have gas, okay? We use a lot of gas, natural gas, down here in the south, right? But you can't live in a home if it doesn't have electricity and you can't live in a home if it doesn't have water because you can't heat or cook or clean without those things. So if there's no water at this house for whatever reason, right, let us know. These people can't stay in that house. If there's no electrical power, people can't stay in that house. Again, if we tell people they can't be in the house, we're going to post it and we're going to let you guys know because we're going to ask you to start driving by at night. People will be allowed to be in the house during the day to fix the problem, but they can't live in the house at night. Uh, high grass and weeds in excess of eight inches. I'm not asking you guys to call me every time you see somebody with a few weeds or whatever like that, but if you think we've missed something that's like holy moly, let us know. All right, again, there's only three of us and soon to be only two of us. All right, excessive trash, rubbish thrown throughout the property. The reason I really want to put that on there is because we don't always get to be able to see the entire property. Sometimes you guys are in places we don't go and we can't see. If they've got a whole bunch of trash up underneath the back deck and you can't see it from the front row but something's happened outside and you guys are back there, let us know. We've got a very good reputation with all the trash companies and they communicate with us well and everything like that. Trash that's been left at the curb for multiple days like, hey, maybe they forgot to pay their bill, let us know that because sometimes, again, we're not necessarily seeing that. Uh, large piles of brush, all right? When we had the hurricane uh, recently, the, the people started collecting up and cleaning up afterwards. We sort of let that go. But we do not allow for accumulations of brush to last for more than 30 days. Uh, damaged structure, broken windows, hanging gutters, things like that. Now, please understand if people are doing some sort of maintenance or whatever, or if it's just a routine thing. But if you see somebody with you know, heavy broken windows or their gutters are falling off their house, those are violations that we can handle and take care of. Trash trucks in residential areas or in commercial industrial areas that are adjacent to res residential areas before 6 o'clock in the morning. That is a violation of the ordinance. 
or if they're in that area after 11 o'clock at night. That is a violation of the ordinance, all right? Again, we have very good rapport with the trash companies. Nine times out of 10, that's a new driver on the route. These guys don't necessarily get paid by the hour, they get paid by the route. So if they can figure out how to get their route done quicker, right, they'll try to take shortcuts and change their routes and stuff like that, the actual direction of their routes. But we have found that a lot of them, when they get close to the residential areas, when they're doing commercial ones, they're making too much noise at the wrong time of the day. <laughs> So they, have, they cannot be at a commercial place that's adjacent to residential or in residential before six in the morning or after 11 at night. Dumpsters, other construction equipment or debris left in the street, all right? We know that people gotta do work. We're always about people having to do work, but they can't just leave it overnight, all right? That's just not allowed. It's a violation of the ordinance. You guys are out there at night. And the thing that I hate is when we find out that not only do they leave it, but then they don't even mark it or protect it. Next thing you know, you got people running, you know, running into dumpsters and stuff. Right? Okay. So, you know, if you see that stuff, yes, you guys can handle it, but it's our, it, that's our, that's our forte. It, give it to us. We can take care of it and get it handled and, and, and taken care of. All right. The next slide says thank you, but it also gives you our code enforcement Peachtree City uh, thing. But I wanted to talk about a couple other things real quick that you guys get complaints on that, uh, that I don't have in a thing. We do not have a noise ordinance. That barking dog, okay, doesn't violate any ordinance. But what we tell people sometimes is we do have the nuisance abatement procedure. So they may be calling you and asking you to make a report. Okay, so make the report for them because those are admissible in, in Judge Ott's court versus somebody just saying, well, you know, I, you know, my neighbor heard it, that kind of a thing. All right, but let them know we're not going to be able to do anything better for them either. Okay, uh, let's see. So, yeah, we have no noise ordinance. There's no times of days that people can do construction or whatever. We're working on that. Um, I think that's about it. You guys have any questions?